unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Did you hear that last verse? He said, whosoever would turn to him, then they would not have fear of evil. They would not have fear of these things. Then he would not mock at their calamities. He would not do all these things to them. The judgment won't come to them if they turn to him. But since he's given us reproof, since he's given us instruction, since he's given us guidance and we did not take it, Therefore, all these things will come upon us. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not after the counsel of the ungodly. See, God's counsel is not ungodly. So therefore, if you follow his counsel, you will not be in a situation where you're uh, called a sinner, where you're called a rebellious person or the wicked person. But sin... God's counsel is righteous and you denied it and chose to go to the counsel of your own ways, you'll reap the fruit thereof, the Bible says in this verse. So if you're reaping uh, sin, you're, 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 you'll sow destruction. He says you reap to the flesh, you'll sow destruction. But if you reap to the spirit, you'll sow everlasting life. The way to sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Too many of us are sowing to the flesh and sowing to sin and thinking that we're supposed to get a reward out of it. Thinking that we're supposed to get a good reward as if we're going to enter into the kingdom of God after you just sowed all those years of sinning. That's not how it works. What's up, bro? That's not how it works. You got to sow to the spirit and then you can be able to have everlasting life. Let's go to that next verse. Let's turn to Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. What's good, bro? Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Verse 6. Right yeah. It reads, my, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? He said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And since you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Thou shalt also be no priest to me, because you have forgotten the law of your God. I will also forget your children. Look at America. Look at America. They call it the home of the free. They call America the home of the free, where you can have all your dreams come true. You know, that's a lie, right? There is no freedom in America unless you're free from sin. Unless your sin is cleansed from you, then you won't have freedom. You're still enslaved. You're still in bondage to sin. But Jesus wants to free you from these things. He says, who the Son sets free, he is free indeed. All things pass away, and behold, they come new again. But if you reject the knowledge of God, you're still in bondage. Because if you reject the knowledge of God, He will reject you. He said, you must confess in front of men for me to confess you in front of my Father. Don't we see what America is going through right now? Yeah, America, you know, we might have a, a lot of things to do. We can, we can do whatever we want in America, but guess what? Just because you can do whatever you want, doesn't mean that you're going to make it into heaven. Just because you can, uh, you know, marry whoever you want, doesn't mean you're going to make it into heaven. Just 
because you can think that you're a woman when you're a man, or think that you're a man when you're a woman, or think that you're a unicorn when you're a human being, doesn't mean that you're going to make it into heaven. I can stand in the middle of the street right now and think that this Tesla is not going to hit me. But uh, if I stand in that middle of the street, then he's going to hit me for sure. So as we see the counsel of God, we see the knowledge of God, we see the commandments of God. America tries to make their way around these commandments. The Bible says, do not lay with men as you would with woman. And the world says, you know what? I can marry whoever I want. I'm going to get married to another man if I'm a man. That's what, the, that's what the world says. That's exactly what America says. Thank you, Obama, for the rebellious law that you passed. The world says, you know, I'm not going to allow my neighbor to come into this country. We're going to block them off because, uh, you know, it's their fault while we're living in sin. Thank you, Trump, for that rebellious law. You see all these things that's going on in America? God commands one thing, but the America commands another. That goes against God's law, and which one is going to stand on that day? See, all we have is AK-47s, M-16s, and all these grenade launchers, and, and grenades, and all these things, but guess what? They won't stand against the God of law. He won't stand against the God of spirit. He won't stand against the God that created all things in this world. That stuff won't stand. You choose wisely who you want to follow. You want to follow America or do you want to follow God? You choose wisely who you want to follow. You want to follow people that sit every day and talk one and need or you want to follow God who is holy. That commanded be ye holy as he is holy. That commanded be ye perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. Who do you want to follow? The one on the day of judgment that's going to be cast into the lake of fire? Or do you want to follow the one that actually is the one commanding these things to be done? Which one do you want to follow? A lot of us have our priorities messed up. Have our priorities messed up. It's a beautiful building to my right and to my left. It's a beautiful lake to my left. It's beautiful people all over the world. People got all types of cars, all types of clothes, all types of money. But guess what? All that's going to perish away. It's going to perish away. What would it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul in the end? What would it profit you? Examine your life. When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? You go on the Instagram or your Facebook? Yes, I know. What's the first thing you do when you wake up in this morning? You check that phone, check the messages. Do you open up the Bible and read it? Do you close your eyes and pray to God, give him thanks for waking you up this morning, put the air in your lungs? Do you give him thanks for giving you a second chance of living the life that he really wants you to live? Of repentance, of obedience, a life of acknowledging the fact that he's giving you salvation. A life that acknowledges the fact that he's died on the cross for you? Is that the life that you live? Or do you live the lifestyle of the booty shorts? Do you live the lifestyle of the skinny jeans and, and all the sagging of the pants? Do you live the lifestyle of smoking all the weed and, and get, drinking all the alcohol? Do you live that lifestyle? Well, I'm here to tell you, that lifestyle is the lifestyle that is the rebellion of God. That's the lifestyle that we were just reading about. When a nation rebels against God, matter of fact, when a nation rejects knowledge, he said his people perish for lack of knowledge, but guess what? He gave them the knowledge. They rejected it. And he's going to reject you on that day. He will reject you on that day. You better get right with God while you still have time. Let's go to Amos. Let's go to Amos chapter 4. Amos chapter 4, 
verses 6 through 13. And we'll read on. It says, And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities, and want of bread in all your places. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. And also I have withholden the rain from you, where there were yet three months to harvest, and I cause it not I cause it to rain upon one city, and cause it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the other piece whereupon it rained not withered. So two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. It says, I have sinned. Up. It says, I have, what do you say? <laughs> yeah, repent and follow Jesus Christ. The Bible says, I have smitten you with blastings and mildew, with your garden and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olives. No, you can't speak through it. Back up. No. Mackenzie, come back. All right, follow Jesus Christ. It says, When your garden and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increase, and the palm of worm devoured them, Yet have ye not returned unto me, says the Lord. I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men have slain with the sword, and have taken away your horses. And I have made the stink of your camp to come up unto your nostrils. Yet have ye not returned unto me, O Lord. I have overthrown you. Listen to this verse, people. It says, I have overthrown some of you. As God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and you were as fire bent brand, plucked out of the burning, yet have ye not returned unto me. Therefore thus will I do unto thee, O Israel. And, I, and, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Prepare to meet thy God, O America. Prepare yeah. to meet thy God, because time is coming when God is going to come back and judge this world. You better prepare to meet your God. If you prepare to meet your God, that means you're going to get right with God. That's how you prepare to meet your God. You don't prepare to meet your God by living a life of sin. You don't prepare to meet your God by doing whatever you want to do, thinking that you have no consequences. That's not how you prepare to meet your God. You prepare to meet your God by doing whatever he tells you. You must obey him. You must... Make sure that your insides are clean and your outside is clean also. You must make sure that everything that he wants to see, he's going to see on that day. That's what you must do. That's how you prepare to meet your God. But I, I want to focus on one situation. You guys know what Sodom and Gomorrah is? Have you ever heard of Sodom and Gomorrah? If you look for Sodom and Gomorrah to this day, you can find it. But it's not going to be much of a city. Sodom and Gomorrah is not much of a city. Sodom and Gomorrah is actually a place over close to Israel. And if you go over there right now, it's all completely burned out. If you go to that place right now, it's nothing but fire and brimstone over in that place. It's nothing but sulfur in that place. There's no bushes, no trees, no grass. Everything is burnt up over in that place. This is the only place in the world where there's 100% sulfur. Because this sulfur came down from heaven when it burnt down this whole city. See, this city was full of pride. I'll repeat it again. This city was full of pride. Okay, I might have to say it one more time. <laughs> this city was full of pride. That same thing that, uh, you know, this little rainbow across the lake that you see, uh, that they named that their homosexuality after, they call it pride. The city was full of pride, it was full of bread. They thought they had nothing. 
to worry about. They had fullness of bread. They had all types of vegetables. They had all types of cattle. Everything was good over in this place. It was nice. It was beautiful. But guess what? They were rebellious. They were rebellious against God. And at the end of the day, God told Abraham, he said, go and look over to Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, if I find 50 righteous men over in that place, I would not burn it out. But guess what? It was not 50 in that place. He said, if I find 40 righteous men in that place, I will not burn it out. He couldn't find 40. He said, if I find 20, I won't do it. He couldn't find 20. He said, if I find 10, I won't do it. He couldn't even find 10. Couldn't even find 10. But Lot, his nephew, took heed to the warning. And when those angels came and said, listen, you got to get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. God is going to bring fire and brimstone on this place. If you don't get out of this place, he's going to devour everything in his sight. You must flee from the wrath to come. Lot ran from that place. But his wife, when they were running back, they, she, she looked back. She missed something about this rebellious city. And this rebellious city caused her to be turned to a pillar of salt. It caused her to lose her life and go to a place called hell. It caused her to go to a place called destruction. And that's exactly where you will be if you don't repent and follow Jesus Christ. If you don't turn from your rebellion, if you don't turn from your sins, if you don't leave the lukewarm church, if you don't leave the fake gospel, but come to the true gospel of Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ of the Bible, You'll be just like Sodom and Gomorrah. On that day when those two angels came, they screamed out, he said, leave this place. He said, leave this place, flee from this place. But the people said, no, we don't want to flee from this place. We like this place. They said they like this place. But as soon as they see that first piece of hailstone, that was fiery hailstone, that brimstone, I'm a what? God bless you, man. Get right with God. The Bible says the preaching of the gospel is foolishness to those that are perishing. You don't like my gospel because you're on your way to hell. But Jesus Christ can save you. Repent of your sin. So back to what I was saying on the day of Sodom and Gomorrah, when they see that first piece of brimstone fall down from the sky, and they realize this thing is going to devour us all, they came running to that, to that uh, city gate. They came running to exit the city. But guess what? It was too late. It was too late. It was way too late. And that's what Jesus Christ wants us to do. God bless. He wants us all to get right with him. He wants us all to repent of our sins so that whenever that time comes, we can make it. And we'll get into that in a few seconds. Let's go to Luke chapter 12, verse 15. The Sodomites don't like the gospel. No. They don't like that stuff. No. They don't like hearing about no Sodom and Gomorrah. They don't want to hear about Sodom and Gomorrah. You're talking. You're talking about my brothers. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am. You better believe it. The Bible says the children of the God and the children of the devil are manifest. He that obeys righteousness is righteous. But he that obeys unrighteousness is a child of the devil. Isn't that right, sir? We must follow Jesus. We must obey Jesus. We can't be that person that's saying, I know you as Christ, but still living in sin, still living in fornication, still watching pornography, still doing all these rebellious things against God. You're not going to be uh, a child of God if you're doing that. You can't do it. You can't. Let's finish the verse. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. And we'll read all the way down to 20. Verse 15 it says, And he said unto them, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in abundance of things which he possesses. 
Okay, let's stop right there. I can preach all day on that. I can preach all, I can preach all day on that. He said, beware of covetousness. Covetousness. You know how we go to war in America? It's not because people come and try to threaten us to, to kill us. That's not why we go to war in America. We go to war most of the time in America because we want oil. Or we want to reap some of the possessions of that land over there. Maybe over in the Middle East. Or maybe over in Africa. Or maybe somewhere over in uh, Europe somewhere. That's why people go to war in America. It's not for, you know, the, 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 the Constitution. It's not for the protection of Americans. It's actually for the increasing of goods. It's actually for the increasing of their covetousness, their sin. When a nation is covetous, when a nation is covetous and they are greedy, seeking after the abundance of clothes, abundance of oil, abundance of materialistic gain, when a nation is covetous, they rebel against God. They rebel against God. Let's read on. Let's hear what the fine words of Jesus Christ has to say to us on this Saturday. Let's see who's going to obey the fine words of Jesus Christ on this Saturday. Is it going to be you? Will you be that person to obey Jesus? Will you be that person, that person to love Jesus back? He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You'll keep his commandments. Verse 16. It says, and he spoke a parable unto them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plenty fruit. Brought forth plenty fruit. And he thought, and he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, thou, shalt, uh, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine, ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou, which thou hast provided? God looked at him and said, You are a fool. This day shall your soul be taken away from you. And then ask yourself, Where is all the crops that you have? Where is that going to go after you go? It's going to go to somebody else. Where is all these jewelry? Where is all the gold and the silver? Where is all the, the money and all these things that we have in America? Where is that going to go whenever we die? It's going to go to someone else. You can't take it to the grave with you. Perfect example. If you go like three blocks down this road, you're going to walk right into the ghettos. You're going to walk right into the ghettos. But if you go back this way, you're going to walk right into the rich areas. Instead of giving the money to the poor, we go and build bigger stadiums. Instead of giving the money to the poor, we go build bigger hotels and bigger condos. And we go paint the little auto, the auditorium over here in Lake Eola. We go make uh, fountains and all types of things around America. We go uh, uh, increase the, the land property over to the right side of us. That's what we do in America. Instead of giving the money to the poor, we look for bigger things to build. Just like this rich man in this story. And just like how God saved him, he said, Thou poor, today your soul shall be given, taken away from you. He's going to do the same thing to America. You say, man, I got $1,000. What should I do with it? I'm going to spend it all on food. I'm going to do all these things. But then somebody knocks on your door at the stoplight and say, can I get 50 cents? 
You look at him and say, I don't have it. Rebellious. Wicked nation they are. Adulterous and sinful generation this nation is. That's what this nation is. You must get right with God before it's too late. Let's read the last verse. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 through 39. This is the words of Jesus Christ, and you must take heed to it, or it'll be too late for you. He says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, until that day Noah entered into that ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus Christ said he's going to come back just like how the rain came when Noah was here. Just like how the days were when Noah came, it's the same way Jesus Christ is going to come. He's not going to come back saying, skip down the yellow brick road, take my hand, and let's be happy. No. He's come to judge this world. And just like in the days of Noah, as I said, they were eating, drinking, and marrying, and doing all types of things. They were doing all types of activities, not worrying about what was to come. Think to yourself, what are you doing this Saturday? Am I thinking about what is to come when Jesus Christ comes? Or am I thinking about what do I have to do later on today? Am I thinking about what am I going to eat later on today? Am I thinking about, uh, you know, what are we going to watch on Netflix or Hulu today? Is that what you're thinking about? Are you thinking about, you know, is it going to rain today? As a matter of fact, look up in the sky. If you see these dark clouds, that's a reminder of the days of Noah. But Jesus Christ said he's not going to come back with the blood of water. He's going to come back with fire and brimstone. He's going to come with fire this time. That's what the rainbow represents. A covenant letting you know that, hey, I'm not going to flood this earth up no more, but you better remember, I'm going to come with fire this time. I'm going to come with fire and I'm going to burn this place out. You see this sidewalk that you guys walking on? It ain't going to be here no more. You see this clouds in the sky? It won't be here no more. You see the clothes that you have on? It won't be here no more. The cigarettes, everything will be gone. Except for your soul. You gained the whole world but lose your soul in the end. What would it profit you? If you gain all of these things in this world, what would it profit you? If you go to heaven on that day and he looks at you and says, Why did you not repent? What would it profit you to have all the girls, all the money, all the clothes? What would it profit? It would not get you into the kingdom of God. And that's what your goal should be. To enter into the rest of Jesus Christ. To enter into the kingdom of God. And you won't do that unless you actually follow the true God. The true God. Unless you give up all those desires of rebelliousness. Unless you give up all those desires of wickedness. You only going to make it into the kingdom of God if you trust in Him. All different types of denominations, all different types of churches, all preaching the wrong gospel. The Mormons preaching that Jesus Christ is Lucifer's brother. The Jehovah's Witness is preaching that Jesus Christ is Michael the Archangel. You see what's crazy? You see this? It's time to get right with God. It's time to get right with God. The ordinary churches down the street are teaching that all you got to do is, is shake around and dance and sing hallelujah all day. That's not how you get into heaven either. The Muslims are saying all you got to do is follow Muhammad. But Muhammad said he don't even know where he's going. You see the foolishness? It's all foolishness, man. You better get right for God. It's all foolishness. Every single last one of them that are on that long path. I think I would have seen something. You see me? I saw this. You see me? There's no help. Don't worry about it. Relax. Don't worry about it. Hell doesn't exist. Hell doesn't exist. Where were you before this? Huh? Yeah, what were you before you were a man? Yeah. You were a man. So you reincarnate into what? 
You can't answer that question, can you? You can't remember it. What were you? Were you a butterfly? Were you a lizard? What was it? I was a human being. A being. What was your last life like? Oh, my God. You see the nonsense, everybody? This is exactly what I was talking about. One person is saying, no, you know, there is no hell. The next person is saying, we reincarnate into another thing. See, that's exactly what we're talking about. Time is running out. And if we, don't get, if we don't get right with God while we still have time, it's going to be just like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's going to be just like the days of Noah. It's going to be just like the days whenever God judged Jericho and all the walls fell down. It's going to be just like those days. But Jesus Christ has a better option. You must get right with God. He has a better gift. And it's not destruction. See, that's a reward if you're choosing hell fire. When you choose that, that's your reward. But whenever you choose everlasting life, then your, then your reward is the kingdom of God. That's your reward. But you don't make it into the kingdom of God by just being a good person. You don't make it into the kingdom of God by just, just liking different cars. You don't make it into the kingdom of God by thinking that you, you know, all you're going to do is reincarnate. You don't make it into the kingdom of God by thinking all you got to do is bow down to a statue of Mary. You don't make it into the kingdom of God by thinking or following a false prophet. You don't make it into the kingdom of God by these things. You only make it to the kingdom of God by obeying Jesus Christ, the only one that lives.